Grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied unto you from God our Heavenly Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this morning is the Gospel lesson, uh, 13th chapter of Luke, where uh, we hear about uh, these tragedies. And once again, the call for repentance, the call for repentance. Lent is rich in that. The somber purple colors of the Lenten season, the length of 40 days, the climax of the Lenten season when Jesus goes to the cross, what? To be a martyr? No. To die for his sins? No. To die for your sins and for mine. It wasn't the Jews who nailed the, in a literal sense, of course, it was the Romans who nailed, uh, hammered the nails into Jesus' hands and feet. It was the Jews of the first century who put him up to it, but in a spiritual way, you held the hammer, I held the spear, I impaled Jesus, and we all crucified him. That's the theme of Lent. But thanks be to God, the Lamb of God did go on the altar. Do you ever think of the cross as an altar? I mean, it's vertical, I and mean, no altar has to be horizontal. But a Lamb of God is a sacrifice. He's offered on the altar of the cross for our sins and perfectly accepted because on the third day the Father raised him from the dead. The sacrifice is sufficient. Sin has been paid for. And by merely accepting the gift, we have eternal life. We have eternal life. So uh, it's still Lent. It's spring. My goodness, 90 degrees. What happened to winter? Oh, there was no winter. I remember there was spring. My sister-in-law who was at our house this weekend. They leave this afternoon. She and my brother Larry, well, on the calendar for several months, came um, to see us from Kansas. Heard of that? Kansas? Anybody here from Kansas? Um, she said, our tulips are right, our tulips are coming up. And she thought it was awfully early. The spring is here. Spring is here. So Lent tells us it's spring. The uh, warmer temperatures, the budding of trees, and baseball. Let's not forget baseball. Phoenix is, uh, I, think, I think it's the national capital of spring training. They have a few teams down in Florida, but they don't count. The good teams come to Phoenix. And there are spring training facilities everywhere. And people come from locals and from around the country, they go to see baseball. That's why Larry and Judy came. They didn't come to see us. <laughs> Nobody comes to see us. They come for other benefits. They came to see spring training. And they didn't even go see the Diamondbacks. Of course, they haven't started. They don't start till Tuesday, I don't think, the professionals. They came to see K-State baseball. Kansas State University, which is in Manhattan, Kansas, which is where they live. All those miles to see K-State play? They did. They saw a game on Thursday. On Friday, we joined them on Friday to see a game. It was great sitting out in the sun. The Wildcats, they wear purple, by the way. Jane found a purple blouse. I found a purple shirt. Larry and Judy have purple everywhere. We went there to purple watch the... And uh, we sat out there in the bleachers, and they, they K State lost 14 to nothing. I spent eight bucks a pop to see that. Did you know baseball is the only sport, the only sport where getting home, coming home is the goal? Football, you try to get a touchdown. Soccer and hockey, you try to get a goal. Tennis, you try to win a point. Billiards, you try to get the ball in the corner pocket. Golf, you try to get the, the ball in the little hole on the green. But baseball, the goal is coming home. I like that. K-State didn't do it, though. But Oregon State came home 14 times. Someone should have told the Wildcats of K-State that getting to first base is nice, but it isn't, it isn't enough. Somebody should have told K-State, I think one guy hit a double. 
hit a double off of the wall, and the fans were delirious. Here comes our rally. Yeah, right. Here comes our rally, and he got on second base, but that wasn't enough. Someone should tell baseball players that getting to third base is really nice. You're really close to home, but it's not enough. Someone should tell runners on base when they come around third base and they get home and there's this big burly catcher from the opposite team wearing his mask and his pads and his shin guards and his gloves and he's built like a tank truck and the ball's coming in that getting close to home but being tagged out or blocked from the plate is thrilling but it's not enough because in baseball what counts is coming home I think that's what Jesus is talking about today. Because today, today the text that Jesus, that we find Jesus in, is similar Lenten stuff, repent, but dissimilar in that Jesus doesn't point out a particular sin. Last week when Jeremiah confronted the people of the Old Testament, and Jesus confronted the uh, people in the New Testament, he confronted them about certain sins. And that sin was I would call indifference to God's call to righteous living and to following his will. Jeremiah told the kings, the queens, even the pastors that you guys are too comfortable in your sins. You don't take God's call to righteousness and his, 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 his reality. You don't take God seriously. You don't take God seriously. It's like a conversation where you're talking to someone, you get this feeling they're zoned out. Zoned out. The people of Jeremiah's time and of Jesus' time in Jerusalem, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I would have gathered you like a mother hen gathers her chicks, but you would not. You are zoned out. That's a specific sin that Jesus calls for calls confronts us with and calls to repentance so the goal is repentance today the goal is repentance but he doesn't talk about a specific sin some guys come up to him and said you know Lord since you're talking about sins do you remember that time where Pilate this is the same Pilate that you all know crucified under Pontius Pilate this guy was wicked you know, there are some attempts in biblical scholarship to say Pontius Pilate was, uh, had no choice. He was in a dilemma. He really shouldn't be, accounted, be held accountable for letting, turning Jesus over to, uh, to the will of the Jews and having him. No, 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 no. Pontius Pilate was a tyrant. Marching into the temple, a temple in Galilee, and slaughtering the worshipers there. Seen a lot of that lately, haven't we? Sometimes right in temples and churches, sometimes in schools. My goodness, again this week in Kansas. What's the world coming to? Hmm? Okay, so, uh, the, and the people asked, uh, they must have sinned really bad. And Jesus doesn't even address that. He says, no, unless you repent, unless you repent, we're in for the same kind of catastrophes. And then they give another example. Says, so, don't you remember, Lord, a couple years ago, a couple years ago when in Jerusalem on the corner of the temple, this tower, the Siloam Tower fell? That happens, doesn't it? Crane in Manhattan falls. Innocent people are crushed to death. This happens all the time, okay? Falls and 18 people are killed. Oh, they must have really sinned. They must have had a specific sin. Jesus says, no, this is, this is for you. This is for you. This is a call for you to come home. I'm so glad you're here this morning. Good turnout. I wish our turnout was like this all the time. Um, even if it's smaller, I'm glad that people come. But you're, you're coming home. You came here to, I hope, to listen and to grow and to draw closer to your Savior to draw closer to your Savior and to be assured that your sins are forgiven and that everything will be okay. Everything will be okay. And Jesus says these, these disasters and so forth at his time were, to, were a call to come home because life, life can turn sour in a minute. Life can turn sour in a minute. 
today you're cancer free, Tuesday you have a doctor's appointment, take a test, come back in five or six days, and the doctor says I need to see you in my office. The Tower of Siloam has fallen on you. Hmm? You drive to Phoenix, I-10, I-8. Phoenix is awful with crime. You get by Avondale, Glendale, Peoria. There's a shooting. Hits your windshield. Hits your car. Hits you or your passenger in the car. Hmm. The terrorist act has hit you. And other examples. Other examples. Jesus wants us to go home. There are two parts to confession. There are two parts to confession. You may have forgotten this from uh, catechism days. But as Luther says, confession embraces two parts. The first, that we confess our sins. Okay? That we do. That we do. But sometimes we don't go all the way. We get to third base and we stop. The second part is to receive forgiveness. God's grace. God's grace. To absorb that. And to take seriously repentance and sanctification. Repentance is turning around. We've talked about this before. Repentance is turn around. You're going this way. You talk bad about people. You abuse your children. You smart talk your wife. You repent. You turn around. That's behind you. You don't do that anymore. At least you try to stay away from it. Repentance is turning around. Hmm? You go through one marriage after the other. huh? You look at pornography. You say dirty jokes. Foul mouth. But sexually immoral. Repent. You turn around. You don't do that anymore. You work at your marriage. I know it's not easy. It's painful. But you work at your marriage. You stay away from that junk on the internet. The movies that are should be X-rated. Remember the days when huh? R was bad enough and X, nobody go to those. Now R is X, that's my own opinion. You turn around, you turn around. Hmm? Repentance is, this is, this is Pastor Gary's indifference. Indifference to the unsaved. Remember last week, under the umbrella of the theme of gathering, I gave you some homework. I challenged you within 14 days to contact somebody, somebody who is affiliated, or not affiliated, but especially is affiliated with this congregation, and we haven't seen him for a while. Haven't seen him for a while. And just try to let them know that we miss them, okay? in a pleasant sort of way. A telephone call, a visit, take him out to lunch, write him an email, go to the house and talk to them. You bump into them, see them. I want you to target somebody. How you doing? Some of you talked about it, that's great. Are we indifferent? Oh, he's just kidding. What's he gonna do if he don't do it? That's sin. Let's turn around and become not indifferent, but passionate about gathering people in. I do believe that the, probably the biggest challenge that your new pastor will face will be to get grace to <sighs> repent of that indifference. We're great with each other. I can't get you to stop sharing the peace. <laughs> I mean, that's wonderful, but why don't we share a little bit of the wealth? Why don't we share the peace to our Hispanic neighbors? 86% of the citizenry in El Centro is Hispanic. Where are they? We're indifferent. It's a sin. You need to turn around. And come home. And come home. Well, I don't have a tidy conclusion for this. But confession embraces two parts. Lord, I'm sorry for this, that, and the other thing. 
and turn around and go the other way. Oh, I have a closer. Closing. It's the, it's the call to, it's the call to come home every day. I mean, you come on Sunday mornings, we're all here. It's a good feeling, mm -hmm. right? You go in the summer, you take a week back to Nebraska to see the family. It's a good feeling. You're back at the old homestead. You go home there and you visit for a week and it really feels good. Your boyhood, or your girlhood home. You go to work, you go to work or take a business trip and you come back to the house, feels good. You're in your own place, sleep in your own bed. Come home. Spiritually, I think we should take a coming home trip every day, not just Sunday mornings. So when your head hits the pillow at night, come home. Father, I thank you that you have kept me this day from all harm. And I pray you that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong. For into your hands I commend myself. Remember that, Maida? You probably learned it in German. Did she? Was Papa no German? Did he preach German sermons? Did Papa preach German sermons? Regardless. You don't have to. I don't get it either. <laughs> oh, okay. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me that the wicked foe may have no power over me. And daily, daily come home. That's what Jesus is talking about. Amen. And his peace which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus into life everlasting. Amen. Oh,